A damage barrier absorbs and blocks incoming damage. It'll even save items like Blink Dagger and consumables from being cancelled. There are three types of damage barriers in the game. Magical, Physical, and Universal. This is similar to how there are three types of damage in the game, and I bet you could guess what each barrier does. A magic damage barrier from something like a pipe or glimmer shows as blue, meaning it blocks incoming magic damage. A physical damage barrier from something like a pavis or solar crest shows as red, meaning it'll block incoming physical damage. And a universal damage barrier shows as yellow or gold, meaning it'll block all incoming damage of any type. But how is the incoming damage calculated? The amount of damage a barrier takes is calculated after generic damage reduction and damage negating sources. This means that if you have a physical damage barrier and you have low armor, your barrier will take a lot of damage. If you have a lot of armor, your barrier would take a lot less damage. The same is true for magic damage and magic resistance. For damage negating sources, this includes spells like Abaddon's Borrowed Time, TA's Refraction, and Wyvern's Cold Embrace. All of these spells completely negate damage that would otherwise be dealt. If a hero has a barrier active while also having a damage negating source active, the damage negating source will absorb the damage first, meaning it'll save the damage barrier from being depleted. So you don't need to worry about applying a barrier on someone right as their damage negating source is about to end. But keep in mind that this only applies to incoming damage that is of the same type that the damage negating source is negating. For example, Wyvern's Cold Embrace only negates physical damage, so taking magic damage would still damage a magic or universal damage barrier. Now let's talk about how damage barriers stack. Damage barriers stack additively, so if you had a universal damage barrier of 100 and another one of 120, they simply add up to a total of 220 universal damage barrier. The same is true for physical and magical damage barriers. You cannot stack the same damage barrier source on the same unit. For example, if your four teammates each bought a Pavis and used it on you, each Pavis use would refresh the HP of the barrier and its duration rather than stacking for a total of 1200. You can have all three types of damage barriers applied to you at the same time. What about the case where you have a universal damage barrier and a magic damage barrier applied at the same time, and you take magic damage? Which barrier do you think would absorb the damage? Ding ding ding, magic. This is because a universal damage barrier actually has the lowest priority of all barriers, so it'll always be damaged and depleted last. The same would be true if you had a universal and physical damage barrier applied. The physical damage barrier would be used up first. But there's actually a really weird bug I found with universal damage barriers. If you like this video and subscribe right now, and I mean right now, you'll receive a 500 damage barrier at the start of your next ranked game. Don't tell anyone or they might patch it out. There are only three sources of physical damage barriers in the game. Pavis, Solar Crest, and Void Spirit's Resonant Pulse. And they don't all work the same way. Pavis and Solar Crest barriers are identical in that they don't stack additively on the same unit. Attempting to will simply apply the Solar Crest barrier HP since that one is higher. Both the Pavis and Solar Crest barriers absorb physical damage from spells and attacks. Resonant Pulse on the other hand is different in that it only absorbs physical damage from attacks, not spells. An example of a spell that does physical damage is Slardar's Slithering Crush. The damage from these spells will go through the damage barrier Resonant Pulse provides. So if you're playing Void Spirit, remember that your barrier is only blocking damage when the enemy right clicks you. Earlier I mentioned that universal damage barriers blocked all incoming damage of any type, and that's kinda sorta maybe depending on the source of the barrier and damage not 100% true. The only thing that'll get through a universal damage barrier is HP removal. Sometimes. HP removal is a unique damage mechanic in Dota. Abilities with this flag don't trigger on damage effects and won't interrupt things like a blink dagger or cancel consumables. Probably the best example of an ability with the HP removal flag is Necro's Heartstopper Aura, but some others include Venom's Poison Sting and Orb of Venom's Poison Attack. Abaddon's Shield provides a universal damage barrier, so if I use it, you might think it'll block Necro's Aura, but it doesn't. The damage from the aura is applied directly to Abaddon's health. Okay, fine. So this spell goes through universal barriers, right? Wrong. If we test the same thing with Pango's Shield Crash, which also applies a universal damage barrier, the aura damage is absorbed by the barrier first. Now since Necro's aura deals magic damage, a magic damage barrier will also absorb the damage, but I just wanted to make a point of how universal damage barriers work against HP removal since I found this inconsistency in them. If a damage barrier is applied to a unit and an illusion of that unit is created, the illusion will not have the damage barrier on them. But if a unit has a damage barrier from either Bubble or Block of Cheese, and an illusion of them is created, the illusions will have the damage barrier. This makes mostly Bubble especially good on illusion heroes. Block of Cheese too, but no one ever builds it anyway. It even works when creating illusions of enemies with something like Disruption or Dark Portrait. 
If there are any interesting mechanics or interactions with damage barriers that I missed, be sure to let all of us know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I hope you learned something new with me.